Hey, greetings and welcome to the channel. And today we're going to be looking at web vitals. Please like, share, and subscribe. And most importantly, reach out to me in the comments section for help and assistance. Link to social media as well as this lab will be posted in the video description. Right, so Web Vitals is another badge I was able to receive from Google Cloud Platform. Um, definitely, there's not going to be a back end to this step, but I think Web Vitals is something really cool to really understand. You know what is causing issues with the website. You know how your website is slowing down, and, and what you're doing, what practices that you're doing that you don't know. This, the articles and the resources, as well as this lab, will help you see what's going on for the most part. All right, so let's get started with the lab. So first thing you want to go ahead and do is you want to download, install, and run the front end like so. And I already have it set up. So this is my front end right here, right? You have some tape, we having tables, and you want to save this populace, right? This would, what we have here, this would end up reaching out to a SQL server, say so, right? Just give you a bunch of examples. Definitely could have been committed to a back end and, you know, made this more interactive, but I just wanted to, um, have this little interact, like little um, add in, remove elements like so. And then I think what could help, what could make the difference is, I definitely want to keep it simple because definitely there's a lot of factors that go into web vitals, right? So I didn't want to make this too interactive. I think I wanted what we have is we're taking advantage of the media stream element here, right? And then it always during COVID, you want to keep that mask on. Right, we want to take advantage of that media stream, and then you know, in your labs while you practice, you can go ahead and see what the web vitals look like as we go from the, as we turn off the media stream to turn it on, and you, you just refresh the page. You know, I was a bit not too interested in ending the media stream, probably throw it off, I'm not sure, but that's just the beginning of your ads. You just want to see how things go along with your application, right? So, what we want to go ahead and do is we want to go ahead and set up module script right to get these specific web vitals here and what we need to do i'm going to do is that we're actually using um this is this is really this is really you know we'll just point out the angular you know the way that you have to use angular right you really don't have to use it like that you could really take advantage of it what we have here is we're just we're taking we're using a service, right? This All this logic is part of a service, but we're using a service as our centralized service to be to represent all the services here. And you think we have a script service for this, but no, this is actually part of that rider service that you're gonna see a lot in this lab, right? It really acts as a base service and acts as the service for usually all services in this app. Right here, we're, adding, we're using it to leverage renderer two in order to add scripts with features to to our code as we as the website develops, and this is actually good practice because with with scripts you only want to load them as needed. As you can see, there's a directive here. I just want to post that. So every time I'm not using this web vitals directive, the script doesn't need to get loaded, right? But say if I am, right, the script gets loaded, right? We use the async flag, right? Basically, so we could get um cls fid and then lcp display and then before i continue right so first input delay is just basically that time when you see that input right the time that you know um a customer clicks on the input and types in the keyboard until the time that the browser is able to respond so this one's responding really quickly and if i try to open up lighthouse um yeah let, let let's have a lighthouse run and see what this is even though this is on developer mode so i'm not sure if it's going to run too well that's fine <laughs> oh wait now cancel desktop all right that's okay even though okay audit the scores right so that is first input the cumulative layout shift is basically oh this is fine this is fine you yeah, know this is fine Right, cumulative layout shit is basically a um if you try to click on an element as they add, does the page shift? So usually on some pages, right, what we have is that button is that is this button kind of shifts to the lower of the page, or as you add elements, this gets knocked out of view and the website is unstable. CLS is about how unstable the website is, and the CLS for this website is great because it's built with angular you know re react you know 
has, you know, I've heard some terrible things about Q and little layout shift, you know, you soon as you hit this button, you know, it's all over the place and then you have to find yourself. Even if you hit something that's supposed to be static, it also wants to go ahead and change. So if Angular, you really get that stability, um, especially with the way I set things up, right? Angular gives you that stability and just more, and just, it takes very, very little, very, very little, um, really very, very little. I'm mean, actually surprised just didn't know, I, you know, I knew that I never had to do with instability on my websites, but you know, knowing that this is a stat, Angular does well to pass. And now largest contentful pay is basically, the measure that is basically when the user first sees the website, because, all right, so what we have here, say for example, I delete the cache, let me, um, let me empty the cache and hard reload, right? We're going to have a black, oh wow, right, right, so let me, let me, slow down the network so that I could just try to let's see the cache and hard reload. What we're gonna have is a blank screen. Maybe I should right we have this blank screen, right? So this is what that largest contentful page is measuring how fast all this all the third parties the first party CSS and JavaScript loads and sets itself up before we get to see a web page we see on slow g 3g this is actually taking a while right but um you know on a regular network right it moves in rather quickly like so right so with that said right we want to go ahead right look at our web vitals here like so and what we want to do we're already starting to see values actually pop up here right it'd be, it'd be very nice if i could add it to the table Right, so what we have, right, if you want to take a look, right, we're seeing our FID values, right, CLS, right, so this is definitely a good way to learn about module scripts, right, right, because we really have to like, to, so really to use scripts, what we have is like these elements, these variables are set to global and you have to put them on the global scope. However, module scripts, right? You can use them like they're ES6 modules and you don't have to throw them on the global scope. They're just available to use, right? The only in that script tag, right? If you want to make them global, you should be able to do that easily, right? Instead of having your regular scripts, which you have to let Angular know that these variables actually exist in the application. Right, so now we want to go ahead and do is you want to set up Google Analytics API. And what you want to do is you want to head to the console cloud and then you want to enable the analytics admin API, right? You want to enable that API. Also, you want to enable the regular analytics API. Like so, you want to go ahead and enable analytics API. And then what you want to do is you want to head to analytics.google.com. So this is actually really beautiful. Right, this is actually a really beautiful we have here. And right, we see we have like one users. Also, we just wanted to point out, we want to go to all events, right? That after 24 hours, we're going to start to see all the data. And then we get to see this, we get to see the CLS, right? FID and a lot of important statistics, right? Conversion is like, oh, say we made money, right? The user wants to stay on the site. You know, maybe our site has ads or a site is uh, a place of commerce, right? You could take advantage of that in the analytics page. However, right, I just want to point out that for analytics, right, what we need is we need, right, we need um, a data stream. And for that, right, we want to go ahead and we need actually an actual website like so. I just want to point out. Uh, it's kind of hard to gain access to here access here, but let me see if I can point this out, right? So this is for Firebase. So what I did was Firebase because Firebase gives you a domain or URL to use. So we want to go ahead and do, if you want to set up a Fire, Firebase for hosting and a link will be provided in the resource section. You want to go ahead and set that up like so. So once you do that, you want to type here and, and type in the tracking ID. And you want to take that tracking ID and use it in your lab, All right? So we're going to go ahead and copy this code Right. Okay. We're going to send this to Google Analytics and Google Analytics, how it works, it uses this G tag, but we need to be able to set up the G tag with the track and ID. So further down is my, um, 
So let me pause here because I don't want to actually give out that tracking ID. I don't know how hard it is to kind of disable. So, right, so there, I just wanted to make a quick quick edit, right? So what we see is that I'm getting my G tag from my um, web vitals, right? Right, so we have our G tag, right? You want to set that up. And now we want to be able to Right, so all this, so as you can see, right before I start to get my data, I just wanna make sure that the analytics API for the client is actually set up before we have that going, before we're, we start to work with and try to load and try to send data to the analytics API. And it's kind of interesting because I use the defer and then async and defer the difference, right, it's just, Basically, defer actually loads it, but does not execute it until after the page loads. Async loads and stops the page on creation until after. So I think to myself, I should use defer after, but however, in this setup, it actually works like so. But definitely practice, practice you want to use defer in your site, right? So now I'm going ahead, right? So you see our cumulative layout shift, right? Very, very small, like the delta is actually zero. Right, so I'm pretty sure that's going to score well, even though this library doesn't tell us what's going on there. Right, and then we want to go ahead and refresh the page like so, refresh the page like so. And right, so at this point, you know, since we set up our G tag, right, and this doesn't need a service account, right, this is actually different from Google API. This is actually Google Analytics now, right? So I'm going to head, go over, I'm going to go to like a different browser, right, like so. Right, and then I'll just head over to Internet Explorer. Oh, Microsoft Edge, wow. Let me see, Internet Explorer, right? Because I want to, and I want to head there like so. Right, and then, yeah, it's not going to display, right? This is, this is Angular 11. All right, let's head over to Edge. Edge Legacy. Right, and then it's able to just to show that it, it counts the user visitors by um how many browsers that it's visited it on. And then well wow, that's interesting. Right, user webcam like so. That's fine. You know it's a bit broken on edge, that's still that's still okay. Right. Right. Angular 11 is still working on Edge, so that's really nice. And then Internet Explorer, I can understand, right? The browser itself isn't secure. Right, and I want to go ahead and do is want to head to our real time. And you want to be able to see, right? So now we had one, as you'll be able to see before. Now we have three different visitors. And now you can get all this metric data as needed. All right, so that is it with the lab. Thanks for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe. And most importantly, reach out to me in the comment section. A link to the lab as well as social media will be posted in the video description.